He's got it. Over with below 30, the 20, 15, 10, 5. He's in the 20, to the 10, to the 5. Leroy Butler to the 50, Leroy Butler to the 40, the 30. Description turf. Throw it to the sideline. It is intercepted. Going deep. Works all alone. Italy flags down. Touchdown. It's caught! It's caught! It's caught! The greatest plays in FSU football history. The debate has raged on. There's a lot of speculation about what we're going to say here today, but we are going to give you the top 15 greatest plays in FSU football history. We're going to do this as a snake draft. We decided the order off screen. I'm going first. Richie second. Harlan's third, just like you see us on the screen. And it is a snake draft, meaning Harlan will pick two. Richie will come back to me. I'll pick two, and it'll go that way. 15 picks. We'll each get five. Let us know in the comments who's right, who's wrong, and what your take is from there. I'm up first. Let's get this thing started. And I'm kicking it back to 1993. It's got to be Scott Bentley's field goal, the first national championship. It got the monkey off of Bowden's back. I think Bentley nailing it against Nebraska at this point is the greatest play in FSU football history. It's my easy number one. I know there are other big plays out there, but when you look at all three championship games, it's the only one play that I think makes or breaks it. Uh, you look at the Jameis to Kelvin. If that's incomplete, I think Florida State just runs it in on the next drive with, or the next down with a timeout. Bentley's field goal, the greatest play in FSU football history. Richie, what you got? Man, I like that pick. But that, that was surprisingly down my list a little bit. I have a play that set up that field goal, and it was a different game. To me, it's a no-brainer. Charlie Ward to work done in the Swamp 1993 like I just watched the the highlight of it again and just hearing how quiet the swamp gets, it was so loud and it got so quiet and just char- or work done, you know, running that ball into the end zone. That was an easy number one. That was my number one. TJ, when you said 93, I'm like, God, oh, dad, done it <laughs> because I think you're going to steal my pick, but thankfully you didn't. Your pick is phenomenal, but man, to me, it's war to done. That will always be Florida state to me. I know how much that play means to you, and I legitimately, if and when I was going to pick it, was going to have you explain the play because I I do know how much (laughs) it means to you. So anyway, all right, Harlan, you've got a lot to pick from here. What is your number one play? Man, I'm feeling good now. I did not expect to have my first choice. Yeah, I I guess I got my first choice. TJ's crazy. The Jameis to Benjamin is definitely number one. I mean – BCS national champion, the reigning, will forever be the reigning BCS national champions. Jameis to Benjamin over Auburn, crazy game. As my senior year in high school, I remember just going absolutely berserk. That's my number one for sure. It's not even close. All right, Harlan, you get to keep it. Yeah, so Peter Warwick (laughs) and the other national title. That was my pick. That was my pick. The catch. I mean, I I was, what was 2000, or was that 1999? I I mean, I was two or three years old, so – I've seen all the replays of it. Obviously, I've seen all the Peter Work highlights. I had a Peter Work jersey when I was two or three years old, but I don't remember it live, but I've seen all the replays of it, and that's definitely my number two. I uh, I think Harlan has a sneaky, a strong, strong draft with <laughs> two championship plays already. Uh, that P-Dub catch was to put the Knolls up 17 with seven minutes to go in the game, basically put it out of reach in a high-scoring game. It basically sealed it. Um, and it is probably when you just think about iconic plays, it's, it's up there as just, he's getting interfered with it's to seal the game. It's like a 43 yard bomb. Um, great pick Harlan Richie. I've got a couple in mind. I'm interested to see what you do here. <laughs> yeah. But, the, uh, where the you Peter War c- catch is actually literally over my shoulder. You can't really see it, but the sports illustrated cover, my goodness. Um, I'm going to not go with the national title pick, but Man, at the time, I think it was the most points any opponent ha- has ever put up at the big house. I'm going to trail Buckley with this pick six at Michigan. It was just phenomenal. I was three years old at the time, so I'm not going to lie to you guys to say I saw it live. But when I go back to highlights of Florida State and realizing what Michigan was and is today, that – Man, that to me was a phenomenal, and that was at the start of the dynasty. So I'm taking T Bucks pick six at the big house, fifty-one to twenty. My goodness, 
I had that a little lower on my list, but I definitely had it in my, you know, top 15 that, you know, we theoretically could pull from. Um, but I'm kicking it back even further. I'm going with maybe the most recognizable, maybe the most remembered play in FSU football history. We're going punt Ruski. I think this is the play that absolutely puts Bowden and his ingenuity and just guts and, you know, intestinal fortitude. We'll try and keep it PG for you guys uh, on the map. I think Bowden pulling off the punt Ruski, Leroy Butler, uh, you know, deep in Clemson, deep in their own territory, uh, set up the win on the road at Clemson. Yeah, I, I just don't even know. Like, if you if you asked anybody what one play is kind of synonymous with Bobby Bowden, I think that would be it, um, especially if they're, you know, older than Harlan. And so, Punt Ruski's mine. Uh, and then I, I have it for another one. So, I'll, if you guys have any takes on this, we'll, we'll go two special teams plays. I'll go the most important play of the Jimbo Fisher era, and that's the fake punt in the national championship. Um, I can't believe you just – let me get two special teams play. I've got all special teams plays, if you think about it, with Bentley started off. But fake punt, if that doesn't happen, and Florida State punts the ball back there, I don't think we'd recognize the towel thing just yet. Maybe Auburn goes up and scores again. I don't know, but I don't want to live in a world where we don't score before half right there to make it 21 to 10. I think that fake punt is the most important play of the Jimbo Fisher era, and I'm not sure that we have a national championship without it. So fake punt. Carlos Williams getting that first down is my second pick there. TJ, I see your special teams pick, and I raise you another one. Deion Sanders calling his shot against Clemson. Good call. Man, he basically went to the crowd and, and hyped them up in 1988, the year I was born. I'm the oldest guy on this show, I think. Um, and yeah, he basically told the crowd, I'm going to take this back. And he was high stepping at like the 20 yard line. Man, that Dion at Clemson, and that's when Florida State had yet to arrive truly on the national scene. But say what you want about Dion, a lot of fans are upset about him because of his recruiting tactics at Jackson State in Colorado. Do you, Dion? I love it. Uh, you know, prayers to Dion for his surgery that's coming up. But really, man, he put Florida State on the map more than, or not more than Bobby, but just as much as Bobby did. And that punt return at Clemson. That is way up there for me. So th that's my pick. Let's go, Harlan. Man, those are some good ones. I don't like TJ's all special teams stuff. I think he's going to lose now. <laughs> We're going to get away from uh, that. But anyways. Um, TJ's next my... pick is Georgia Tech. <laughs> <laughs> my next one is got to be 2003 Ricks to Sam. Uh, I remember yes. sitting in my living high. room. I was seven, seven years old. I have, you know, all the love in the world for Florida State and just watching that play for him catching it in the back of the end zone. And Chris Ricks just always showed out against Florida for some reason. Um, but, man, that's got to be my next one. Uh, and I guess I get two in a row. So, First of all, we, we had Ricks and Sam on this show like two years ago. And, yeah, man, that, that was down. fun. And, yeah, man, that, that was a – the best part about the Ricks to Sam is if you listen to the Gators radio broadcast clip of it, and he is just oh, so yeah. dejected, so dejected. Go know, ahead, yeah. on. So I'm going a little bit more recent again, but that's okay. But I think the play that actually won us the 2013 national title oh, was the Rashad green split in the Auburn defense oh, on the final drive of the game you. and just, you know, they split those two defenders, and I don't remember how many yards it was. It had to be 45, 50 49. Yards, yeah. No. Um, I think that's what actually won us that game. I know TJ starts to claim, you know, fake punts and stuff, but I think that's <laughs> the play that ended up winning us that national title. I like it. I like that. I think that's a huge play. Again, I think the – I love Jameis more than anything. So that's my wife and kids, I guess I'm supposed to say. But um, – <laughs> And so I'm so glad that Jameis did get to toss the, the game-winning touchdown. But I truly do think, like, that play won us a title. But I think you're right. Like, the Rashad Green catch and, and run is so much more important. Because if Jameis throws incomplete, and we have three more downs to, to try and get that and a timeout. You Should know, have been 15 so. yards tacked onto it, too, because he got horse-collared. So. Yeah. Yeah. A hundred percent. It's still upset. <laughs> um, all right, Richie. What do we what do we got? I'm gonna go to the exact same game, and I can't believe this is still on the board. 
But Kermit Whitfield's touchdown return against Auburn. TJ, I think you were there as well. I was in the stadium at the Rose Bowl with the mountains in the background. It was gorgeous, beautiful. And for him to bring that back and give Florida State the lead, I know that you know Jalen Ramsey would give up the best missed tackle ever in Florida State football history. But man, that, that Kermit Whitfield touchdown was electric. And you know Carlos running him down as a lead blocker, that to me was one of the greatest plays ever. And I will never forget that just being in that stadium electric. So my top nine are gone right now. I had T buck. <laughs> I had T bucks pick six that you mentioned as number 11. So I guess I got to go with my number 10 and we're taking this back to 2010. I think it was 2010. I think if not, were, I think I know where you're going here. We'll edit this. Peach. Fruit. Um, we're we're going to Atlanta and we're going to Greg Reed knocking the absolute piss out of Marcus Lattimore. Um, honestly, one of the, just the most ridiculous, hardest hits you've ever seen. Um, Florida State has the wherewithal to pick the ball up and get running the other way. Don't score on it. But I think that play just to me, it was almost just like a a chain, like a, an announcement that like Florida State is is back. And from there, what Florida State did 11, 12, 13, 14 and beyond. Uh, Florida State was back for for a time. And so that hit is just one of the most iconic hits in Florida State history. I know there's a lot of big ones. I've got some other ones that we'll get into some honorable mentions here in a little bit uh, once we do wrap up. But that Greg Reed hit versus South Carolina, uh, still to this day, when you watch it, just absolutely you know bone-jarring hit. Um, so that's my big one. And then, man, I, this is my last pick. So this is tough. Cause I got a lot of stuff on here that I want to use, but I'll just go in order what I had in order. Um, I'll go with the rock Preston touchdown to tie Florida in, in 94. I think, you know, the play itself, probably not like the most spectacular play of all time. Um, you know, Florida state was going to score on this drive anyway, but to come back from 31 to seven and, and tie that game up and really should have won it late. Um, after an interception, just, you know, not enough to, you know, truly did run out of time um, to keep, you know, that, that kept Spurrier from ever winning in Tallahassee. Um, massive, massive tie. I know that, you know, predict or, you know, saying a tie is in my top 10 or 15 or whatever we're doing here is maybe crazy, but the, the touchdown to tie UF in 94, uh, the choke it doke is, is, is my, uh, my last pick here today. Yeah, that's a great pick, man. What a game, man. I remember the headline, Florida State beats Florida 31-31. Yeah. You can't beat that. Yeah. Um, Gene, Gene said, it's not like Ty, it's not like kissing your sister when when you when you do it like they did it. So <laughs> anyway, <laughs> you guys' final picks. I'm hoping you pick some of this stuff that I had here high yeah. on my list, but so, we'll see. So I'm going back to 1998 for this one. And we talked about Bobby Bowden and what empowers him, you know, what emboldened him, the riverboat gambler. I'm going back to that 1998 UF game when he ran the reverse to Peter Warwick, where he threw a touchdown to Ron Dugans to beat the Florida Gators. Yeah, that to me, that was just, I was watching the play earlier today in preparation for this episode. And man, Peter Warwick to Ron Dugans. What a phenomenal play. Two of the greatest receivers in Florida State history. And to see it play out like that, that was phenomenal. Florida State would obviously beat Florida in that game. Harlan, this last pick is yours. Don't let us down. <laughs> this one's going to be off the wall, and I bet neither one of you have it. I'm going back to 2014. Florida State and Notre Dame, the pick play. Now, I just want to say, I know it was a penalty, but I was in the stadium. You could hear a pin drop when they caught that touchdown and then the second that referee reached into his pocket the place exploded man i mean it was crazy and if if we lose that game we probably don't go to the playoff that year because if you remember they dropped us all the way from one to three for the playoffs so if we go in and end the season 11 and one instead of 12 and 0 we probably don't make the playoffs so that's my number five i know that one's a little off the wall, but I wanted to have it off the wall. No, I like it, but I will. I do want to point out that was 
Jimbo at Florida State when he was in his bag because at the end of the first half, Notre Dame ran that exact same play and scored a touchdown on it. And Jimbo chewed the refs out and said, that's an illegal pick. And he went in on them. And if he doesn't do that before the half, he probably doesn't get that call at the end of the game. That was the last great memory I remember of Jimbo because he knew what he was doing at the time and it paid off at the end. And then we had the interception on the last play of the game and Florida State wins. Glorious night. I was there too, Harlan. Yeah. Great night. I was in the other end zone. And so I couldn't tell, I w- couldn't hear what the penalty was from where we were <laughs> over the lot. Cause it was, you're right. So loud. And all of the Notre Dame players came on the field because they thought they had scored a touchdown. And so from where I was sitting, like I was sitting like exactly across from where the pick play happened. And so we couldn't see, I, I just thought it was a too many men on the, on the, on the field. I, I thought it was like a celebration thing. And that's why when they lined up 15 yards back, I thought they were just putting a 15 yard penalty on the extra point. And um, so anyway, yeah, it, yeah, I was, I was elated too. I like the pick too, Harlan. It's a little off the wall. All right. What plays did we miss? We're going to do some really, really rapid fire honorable mentions. What plays did we miss? What what did we miss? Hit the comments. Let us know what you would have put in that we didn't hit on. And just before we get to these honorable mentions, I want to give some love to our friends over at Garnet and Gold. All right. If you've been a Seminole fan for the last 35 years, which is the time frame that we show these highlights from, you have certainly stopped by or shopped online at GarnetandGold.com. We are so appreciative of their partnership and their continued support of not only this channel, but FSU athletics and FSU's NIL efforts. They work with athletes across so many of our sports. They give back to our boosters. They've employed thousands of of FSU students down throughout the years. And if you're shopping anywhere else, you need to fix those shopping habits. Go to garnetandgold.com. Whether you're looking for the latest jerseys, Florida State got a jersey refresh this year. You're looking for NIL stuff. You're looking for Columbia. You're looking for the Nike coaches polo. If you're looking for the Nike shoes that come out of here, whatever you need, garnetandgold.com has it. You can save 15% by using our code at checkout. That's no slaw, N-O-S-L-A-W, all one word, at checkout for 15% off. Appreciate Garnet and Gold for their support and all that they do for not only us, but for FSU. Appreciate Garnet and Gold. Appreciate their support. Let's do some rapid fire honorable mentions. We'll go around the horn. We'll go just like this. So I don't know how long you guys' lists are, but when we run out, then whoever has more, I think Richie has a list of about 37 of them, can go through the rest. So I'll start, then Richie, then Harlan, and we'll, we won't snake it. We'll just go one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Um, first one that I have on here that we didn't mention was Dalvin Cook's run against Miami in 2014. I wanted to show Dalvin some love. Obviously an all-time great at Florida State. Unfortunately, not on the championship team. And so it was hard to find impact plays. But he, you know, if you were just doing purely athletic plays forever, I mean, Dalvin Cook would get so many. But Dalvin beating Miami to, you know, with 305 left on the clock down in the 305 <laughs> in 2014 was pretty high for me. Uh, Richie? Yeah, I had um, Winky to Snoop Menace uh, against Clemson, the greatest play action of all time. Yep. I had the uh, very underrated, the Jordan Travis dribble touchdown. Um, <laughs> that's that's a great one. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, that, I mean, it's just an awesome play. The way that he just bounced it off the ground and like a basketball and then ran it in, just incredible. So here's one, a recent one, probably the most recent one we'll have on this list. Um, we entered last year, 2022, no matter when you're watching this thing with a lot of questions and a lot of wonder of whether or not Mike Norvell would make it out of the season, what would end up happening. Uh, give me Shaheen Brown walking it off yeah. against LSU, the block in, in, in the Bayou, uh, Harlan and I are sitting in the end zone watching that happen live. And I know Richie was there. Yeah. Give, I, you, you might talk about recency bias or not, but that, that, that is going to be a play we look back on as turning this this program a- around. Truly, I believe that. So, uh, give me the blocks, PAT. All right, Can't next one, one. Special season. Kelvin's touchdown against Florida in the Swamp in 2013. I had that. Yeah, My yeah, goodness, yeah. that was ridiculous. What do you got, Harlan? It's got to be Greg Jones just throwing oh, Dexter Reed. Yeah. Oh, t- oh, the yeah. stiff arm and the UNC. helmet just flying off. <laughs> uh, I mean, that one just stayed. I, I'll never forget that. Um, 
Man, again, we've mentioned Deion Sanders a few times. Florida State led 13 to 7 in the Sugar Bowl in 89, and he had a walk off interception to basically end the game. Um, so give me Deion Sanders' interception to seal the sh- Sugar Bowl in 1989 against Auburn. I had that on my list. I'll go with Dexter Carter throwing the flag right on Bernard Clark's head against Miami. I like it. It was the first win in five years for Florida State over Miami. And my goodness, I've talked to Dexter Carter about that play. And it's hilarious. He loves it. And that was just phenomenal. Yeah, my last one is the Dustin Hopkins 55-yard. I had that. Good job. Yeah, I like it. I I didn't have that, but that's a great one. (laughs) Yeah. Um. Let's give some love to Kenny Shaw. I really, you know, the BC game just didn't didn't start out like you wanted in 2013. And uh, I think this put Florida State up 14. So for all intent and purposes, helped them find a way to beat BC on the road. Give me the Hail Mary from Jameis to, to Kenny Shaw uh, in 2013. All right. I'll go back to 1993 again, showing some love to Charlie Ward and the father of a future Seminole, Will Fryer. Uh, against Miami, definitely put the game, uh, put Florida State ahead, and Florida State would not look back and won the game. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, I had one more. I totally forgot. It's on the big screen every single time you go to Doak, and it's Stanford Samuels hitting Roscoe. I had it. Yeah. In the rain. I mean, just. And absolutely. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, just one of the nastiest hits you'll see. So that's my last one. All right. So it's just me and Richie now down to the wire. Um, Give me D walk, uh, you know, again, similar to the LSU play. I've, I've been a lover of special teams, obviously here today, but give me DeMarcus Walker walking it off. Well, I guess not walking it off, but blocking it at the rock to beat Miami in 2016. We don't make the orange bowl with that. We don't continue the streak against Miami. That was Jimbo's last win seventh in a row uh, without that play. So D walks block. How many did you have left TJ? Cause I, like I, I have seen one, two, three left. All right, I've, I've way more than that. So let me give you three real quick, right? Rapid fire. Um, first one, the rooster, Marcus Houtson, his deflected pass against UF in 1998. That would, yeah, that would two dub, which would send Florida state to a national championship, which unfortunately the rooster had to play because um, Chris Winkie could not, unfortunately it is what it is. And then I'll go Travis Rudolph's touchdown against Syracuse. TJ, you were there on the field and saw up close and personal. Amazing. Yeah. And then Jordan Travis's touchdown against Florida last year. My goodness. And I have more, but I'll let you go. Yeah. So give me uh Oh, I actually have four. I lied. Sorry. Uh, Jameis's run against Oklahoma state. Yes. Um, I'll give you one more and then you can do a few more. And Carlos, Carlos's overtime touchdown against Clemson in 2014. Obviously, the game Jameis didn't play. They probably could have picked a number of plays, the smag pass, the, you know, the forced fumble down at the end, but to to walk it off with the overtime touchdown, give me Carlos Williams there. Go ahead. All right. I'm just gonna run out the what I have here and it'll be really quick. Nigel Brad, I'm getting ejected against Miami on a, a, uh, the cleanest yeah. hit you could ever imagine. Sticking with the Miami theme, Greg Reed's punt return for a touchdown right before halftime. Uh, what a amazing return. Greg Reed, very underappreciated, Noel. Um, Dalvin Cook's run against Clemson and get at, at Doak when he ran down the sidelines and just took the angle. And my goodness, no one was catching him. Kelvin Benjamin's touchdown at at Clemson um, oh, yeah. in that 2013 game. And then one that might be underappreciated, Willie Reed's one of his punt returns for a touchdown against Virginia Tech in the first ACC championship game. Yeah. And that's all I got. Man, I feel like there's so many. Again, if, if we missed your favorite play, hit the comments down below. Um, I've got two more. Uh, in 2015, Florida State was down 9 nothing, and Florida was looking to score – Again, I'm sorry, 2014, and wow. Terrence Smith ran back a 94-yard interception for a touchdown, uh, made it 9-7, to and Florida State would never look back. They ended up winning that game, obviously, in 2014. And then my last play of the day, uh, again, we've kept it pretty uh, – you know, you can tell the plays against the rivals just mean a little more. Um, give me fourth and 14. Andrew Parchman yes. didn't come in and make a ton of plays – didn't, you know, did not light the world on fire by any means, but he made a big one when it counted. Jordan Travis steps up into the pocket, finds him down to the one. I'm glad that he only got down to the one just for the record. I think that let Florida State use up a couple of Miami's timeouts, 
run out a little bit more clock. That honestly worked out perfectly. Fourth and 14 makes my final play of the day. A fun list. This was cool. <laughs> How many? What play? Well, I wonder. I cannot wait to read the comments. People mad online with the biggest play that we left out, like that we missed or left out or forgot about. You know, it's coming. Oh, 100%. And, and, <laughs> and, and, and to your point, TJ, Andrew Parchman will be remembered by most, like, you know, hardcore Florida State fans for the rest of their lives. If he doesn't make that fourth and 14, we all forget about him five years from now. It, yeah. that That's all it takes a big play against a rival. I love it. Yeah. And I cannot wait to hear uh, the listeners tell us what we missed on because I'm sure we did. And how cool is it to be a Florida State football fan that we had a list of a top 15 plus a ton of honorable mentions and we still probably missed some big ones? Yeah, we definitely did. There's definitely plays out there that we should have included. So let us know about it in the comments. Hey, when you let us know about it in the comments, include the link to it so we can go back and watch it on YouTube. I think that's a ton of fun. You got to watch some highlights here today as we talked about them. Um, hey, we cover, if, if this is your first time to the channel, if you've never seen us before, hit the subscribe button. We cover a ton of recruiting and just, you know, general FSU football news. There's a lot going on. If you're a regular to the channel, let us know what you thought about this video. Going to try and do some more big picture stuff like this. But thank you guys for tuning in. Richie Harlan, thanks for hanging out. Harlan, I love those um, those headphones you got. We'll talk to everybody soon. Go Knowles.